Hello, welcome to my Minecraft 1.7.3 world tour, uh, beta 1.7.3 that is. Um, I started this world uh, a little over a year ago. It started as a server uh, because I got interested in older versions of the game. And once the server died, it just turned into my own single player world. So now I'm doing a world tour just to show off what I've made in a year. And also, um, some people on the Golden Age Minecraft subreddit uh, suggested that I do this, and that kind of gave, gave me the idea, uh, particularly Mongster suggested this, so thank you for the idea there. Uh, but if you are looking to just see a tour of the castle itself, my uh, castle town, then you will have to skip ahead because I'm not starting there, but I'll put uh, timestamps in the description. So you can skip to whatever part of the tour you want. But I'm starting here in this little snowy town that I called Zvelikt. Uh, really just a hamlet. I just have a couple buildings here. But I'm starting here because it's the furthest away. And then I'll travel to the next nearest place and then we'll go to the castle. But this place I actually uh, came to here and uh, settled here because I wanted to build the castle here originally. The reason why is because uh, I thought the land here was just great. Um, I can't really find such like these vast uh, flat lands in other biomes uh, except tundra biomes. So I came here and thought this would be a great place to build the castle but I decided uh, after all I want a green place. Um, I don't want my castle to be in a snowy area but still the snowy area is really cool and uh, I decided to make something here. So we have a hamlet here, and uh, in this hamlet we have the inn, the Damarung Inn. Now, uh, this is very simple. There's no really practical uh, reason to build this, but it's uh, very kind of cozy. You know, maybe travelers coming to this little uh, village can come to the inn and have some food and have a bed. Uh, the upstairs rooms are, are not finished, but when I come back here, and I will come back to this area, uh, I'll spruce these up. But yes, I'm very pleased with how the downstairs is, how cozy it is. You have a cozy little um, fireplace here warming the uh, whole building up. have their food storage here, of course, to serve the patrons. There's like a... <laughs> I put like flavor text here. Because I wanted to do that with the world. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing that. But yeah, that's that's here. Uh, and that's the inn, essentially. You'll notice that some of the buildings here, well, just, just a couple of them, there's not that many buildings, have this sort of uh, stone uh, architecture mixed with this half-timbering. That's because the half-timbering, I like it so much that I use it everywhere. But I realized, like, okay... I, I have to stop. I need to use something other than this style to make all my buildings. So I went through this sort of like Georgian, like 18th century um, style with the stonework and these uh, these patterns. Like, not sure what to call these keystones on the on the corners. So that's why it looks like that. Now over here we have the first thing I actually made here, and uh, basically my base in this area the Miner's Guild, I called it. And I imagine that uh, since it's so small, the Miner's Guild is uh, has very few members, so they can only afford this little this little shack, basically, to store all their equipment and their resources from mining. And, of course, to uh, rest up here if they need to. Only one bed, though. I guess they have to share it. And um, I really like how kind of cramped it feels. And uh, you have to use the space creatively, so like putting the chest here under the stairs. I think that's very fun. Of course, right next to the Miner's Guild, we do have the mine itself. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm, I've am i been playing this game for a very long time, and I used to just make very, very boring mines. Just like a mine shaft down to diamond level and then strip mine. So I am done. I am absolutely done with making boring mines. I want all my mines to have something kind of interesting to them. Have this fun sort of uh, <clears throat> actual feel like a mine shaft, but also have some practical purposes built in. So you'll see a lot of that at uh, the castle town. I'm very proud of my mine there. But this is kind of the prototype. So I just have a, a, a mine railway 
no power rails, but it goes all the way down into the mine shaft. And you can use gravity to uh, ride a minecart there. But also, you can um, use a, a chest minecart. Leave it down there while you're mining, and if you need, you can use it for extra storage, and then push it all the way back up, and push it into this little uh, unloading area, where you'll be able to unload the minecart, and uh, take it back to the, the miner's guild, or put anything in here in this chest. And that's basically the mine. Nothing too crazy, but it's kind of cool, kind of cozy. Now, uh, this area over here... You'll notice the, the path kind of expands into this weird small plaza. That's because I wanted this to be the center of town. You, you can go this way, this way, or straight ahead, which is where I'm going to put the Alchemist's Guild. And uh, that plan is basically the main reason that I'm going to return here. I want to make a big, like, uh, uh, sort of a wizard's university called the Alchemist's Guild. Um, and that's going to be a huge thing, but it's not just going to be decorative. It will have sort of a some weird magic stuff that the alchemists are doing within the guild and actual uh, novelty stuff or even stuff that I can use for future builds. But of course there's no, uh, there's no potions or enchantments in this version. So I had to come up with some creative ideas for, for the weird magic stuff that uh, the alchemists could be producing in there. Um, but if you go up here, it'll take you up here to this raised bridge thingy. And you can see over there, uh, the uh, rail bridge that uh, goes from the station over there all the way to the town of Lumbridge, which we'll be going to. And I think it just adds a very nice, um, not sure what the word is, maybe. Uh, it adds, it adds to the uh, to Zvielicht. And it kind of makes it feel like there's there's something going on here, you know, like there's life, like... There's people traveling here because there's there's a rail here, so obviously people come here. So I like that a lot. I think it uh, just expands. Uh, it just gives so much uh, to this place. A little rest area here for if you get here at night and you need to just like you you don't want to go down there, you know, and risk being attacked. So just go in there. And now we will take the cart on our way to uh, the town of Lumbridge. Uh, Quite a nice little cart ride, not too long. Say goodbye to the little hamlet of Zvielicht, which is uh, German for Twilight, by the way. And uh, we'll get to Lumbridge in, I guess, a few minutes. Uh, you can skip ahead if you want. There will be a timestamp, but if not, just enjoy the ride. Um, not too much to say. <laughs> it's quite a nice little ride, though. Of course, we have to pass through the hill here, so I made a tunnel. Lowers there because uh, the the other end of this rail is uh, lower than the uh, station back there in Zvielikt. Uh I like this area. There's something very cool about this view. The mountains are quite uh, interesting. And I thought this mountain in particular, it looks very natural, weirdly natural for this version. It slopes very gently. But yeah, this section is not super interesting, although in a little while uh, you'll get the best view, basically, on this uh, rail, on this uh, certain rail track. You'll notice also that uh, there's no arches uh, under the, the rail here <laughs> over this whole uh, length because I got lazy. It's too much work, and there's nothing really in this area either, so doesn't need to look nice. The sun's going down. Slightly concerning because this rail is not safe at night. Uh, there are no torches. Coming up here is a fantastic view. You, you, you're approaching this hill and then you see, rising in the distance over there, the Lumbridge Castle. So cool, such a great view as you're riding the rail. I think that's just awesome. I love how that turned out. It wasn't really planned, it just it just happened and uh, looks great in my opinion. 
So now as we go through these, these little tunnels, these little caves, we come out the other side of this hill. And we have here the, uh, the town, the region of Lumbridge. This was the uh, first region on the server. And um, uh, I'm going to have to sleep first. Let me get to a bed and then we'll start uh, showing you around. But I might as well tell you this is, of course, the rail station. This rail goes that way. And this part is going to be a rail going out towards the castle town. And that's going to be a huge project because it is a long ways away. But uh, it's kind of fun. I like making rails. Let me hop down here. Hopefully I don't get attacked. Yep. Sleep in here real quick. Come on. There we go. So, like I said, this was a server originally, and uh, this is basically the spawn area. This town of Lumbridge is the first thing I made, but I did not make the castle. Uh, my friend made that by himself, uh, and it is very awesome. <laughs> so if you see actually over there on that little island, that island right there is actually the spawn point. And um, there's a the little board right there with the rules. Uh, that were up. I keep that up, of course. It's a fun little reminder that this was a server. Well, let's take a look at the town real quick, and then we'll go to the castle. So, uh, welcome to Lumbridge. If you've played RuneScape, you probably remember that uh, name. Recognize it. I just stole it shamelessly. But uh, this, I'm very happy with how this area turned out. I think it's very sort of uh, just peaceful looking. It's very, very nice. I mean, I'd want to live here. Um, I had this cottage for sale. Uh, I was hoping one of my friends would move in. Never happened. The server died uh, shortly after I built that. Little blacksmith here with his outdoor forge where he can smelt some ingots and then uh, smelt them some more, I guess. And uh, I imagine this is like an anvil where he can sh shape the uh, ingots into whatever he needs to make. Uh, this is just, just a little path that leads up to the rail station. Back down here, the path takes you along this little uh, length. Da dig hole. <laughs> that was just the mine, uh, the communal mine, I guess. Not too interesting, I think. The uh, communal nether portal, of course, very important in any community. Gotta have your portal to hell. Welcome to Farm Island. This was... Uh, my first base, actually. Uh, this little house and this whole island. Uh, I had some uh, wheat here. I guess my friends could take if they wanted. Little pumpkin patch. Of course, pumpkins can't actually grow here. And uh, the wheat field, the only wheat field in this entire world. Uh, I'm gonna make a farm area around my castle town, but for now, this is the only wheat that's growing, uh, as far as I know, unless my friends made a secret one that I never found. Uh, this was my first house. Very kind of, uh, you know, not too big, but cozy, cozy. Uh, it's a very simple bedroom. Single bookshelf for all your uh, little novel collections. The wheat field. Uh, took me a while to make sure that this was mob proof. Um, there are some sort of places over here where initially mobs could come over so I had to like strategically place leaves and dirt blocks and stuff but as far as I know mobs cannot get in here and nothing's trampled so I think that proves it um, that's basically it for the town of Lumbridge there's not much over here um, I could return to this town but unlike his V, like, I don't really have a plan for what I would build. But I'm sure if I came back and uh, just thought about it, I'd come up with something. It's a really nice area. I really like how it turned out. Especially the, the view of the castle in the distance, uh, sort of framed by the village. Let me get a good look at it. I think it just looks awesome. Uh, and again, it was totally unplanned. It just turned out that way. It looks beautiful. And let's go see the castle right now. Um, like I said, it was built by my friend. He called it a manor house. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I think it's kind of a castle, but... Manor house, castle, palace, 
you know, kind of fluid terms, umbrella terms. See his big old sugarcane farm right there. And uh, no easy access. Uh, I guess I could have taken a boat. That, that could have been fun, but rails are fun. I like using the rail, so I'll use it. And uh, let's trek over. Get over to the front of the castle. So here is the castle. As you approach, I love how it just looms over you. It's pretty awesome. You have these nice stairs up with uh, these gardens, little gardens in between. Quite nice little areas. You can just sit here and relax, enjoy some tea, and look out onto the landscape. Now, inside the castle itself, we have this first floor. There's a library over here and a uh, storage room, smelting room. The great library, of course, many, many books, and uh, no library is complete without a uh, music disc room. Over here, we have the great dining hall. Quite nice, quite nice, with expensive paintings lining the walls. Quite a luxurious experience, especially with this uh, fireplace here. I was amazed when I first saw this and, and saw that it wasn't burning down the place. And that's when I kind of learned, like, oh, maybe it's not so hard to build fireplaces inside your houses. And I kind of inspired me to start doing it more, which you'll see later. Nice little kitchen slash, pa slash uh, pantry area. Not really much back here. You can kind of see the back of the castle. Uh, we'll go up here to the second floor. Now, uh, this floor has his all of his storage. <laughs> and this is kind of hilarious because I'm really tempted to take some of this stuff. And even though, he, you know, it's it's a single player world, I, I don't think he's ever coming back. <laughs> I just feel kind of weird and scummy about it. So I, I don't take anything from here, even though I probably should. Nice little sitting room with uh, some cool views. Um, carpet. <laughs> Back over here. We have more stairs up to this uh, little sitting table room. And up here is the uh, bedroom with this nice little, uh, not sure what you call these, but the things that overhang the really fancy beds. You know what I'm talking about. Little desk here. Uh, with a very tall bookshelf. Um, pretty nice views from this desk. Uh, I'd like to work up here. Then go up here, and there's just kind of this storage area with uh, a lot, a lot of bookshelves. Uh, people who own this castle really, really like books. And um, cool view of the, uh, the roof and the towers up here. Um, but yeah, that's basically the castle. Uh, Lumbridge Castle. Only other thing is the uh, towers, but you just go up there and uh, you just can look out from them. There's not really much up there. Oh yeah, might as well just show you this real quick. Uh, this just generated as uh, one of those water blocks that never flows. And uh, no one ever updated this like little area, so uh, it just stays there forever. <laughs> I love it. I want to keep it there forever, so never going to touch it. That's kind of fun. And... Now that we are through with everything in Lumbridge, uh, we can actually get to my castle town. Uh, the sun's going down, so I'll sleep, and then I will embark. And I probably will just cut out the embarking because you basically just walk there. It's not exciting at all, and it's a long walk. So uh, I'll see you there. Squeebit. Okay, so we walked a little, we uh, boated a little, now we are approaching the right area. And the first thing you're going to see is this huge, awesome mountain over here. I just love the way this thing looks. It has like these caves poking through it over there. And it's rising right over a sea. And that's one of the things I looked for, one of the things I wanted uh, was an area with 
a big like land mass like this uh, next to an ocean. So that's awesome. Now, all we have to do is come over here, park our boat, and then walk to the castle. Originally, I was going to build the castle like on the coast, um, but this terrain is too, too kind of hilly. I figured I'd have to work too much, so I've moved inland a little bit. And uh, let's see, you might be able to see it through the trees already. Yep, you can see part of it. Here it is, my baby. The magnificent castle of this place. Still unnamed. I don't know what to call it, but it's... I like it so far. I think it's really coming together. So, this is my castle. Uh, I suppose I will start from the outer areas and then move our way into the main keep there. It's uh, mostly finished. Um, a lot of it is unfinished, uh, and this being a castle town, the town is notably absent for the moment being but we do have one sort of towny building here this is the uh the gatehouse slash guardhouse uh, the guardhouse is attached here enter here through the iron door have this first level where the uh the guard's equipment will be stored equipment pending and uh, you can actually uh, access the uh, gate redstone here up here we have a little common room not very interesting Little place for the guards to sleep, uh, quite nice, uh, and this little wood-burning stove probably keeps the room warm. And uh, of course the guards have access uh, to two important places that guards might need to go. The actual parapets of the castle itself, they can go up or down into the dungeons. Uh, the dungeons are not built yet, that is a uh, later plan. Let's go... Uh Let's actually enter into the courtyard of the castle. Now, uh, these gates, there's a, uh, this gate design is, is, uh, I use it again. I'm going to use it on three sides of the castle. Uh, this is the, let me think. Uh, I think the sun rises in the north. So then this would be the, uh, western, no, eastern gate. The, the gate facing out eastern. So, uh. It's kind of supposed to look like a, a big, you know, wooden double door that you would see in an actual castle. Uh, of course, instead of uh, sort of swinging open, it slides in. Redstone isn't very complicated, but uh, I don't use redstone a lot, so I'm kind of proud. Uh, I did need to make a uh, sort of toggle uh, for this because, you know, the button has to switch what it's doing every time you press it. Either opening or closing. Whoa! I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I do not know what that was. Uh, anyways, here we are in the courtyard. The courtyard is giving me kind of a hard time, a lot to uh, think about. I just don't know what to place where. And I'm not sure if I'm happy with the plans I have uh, for how I'm going to lay it out yet. But, uh... Mainly, I just want to fill it with sort of buildings, like the, the sort of finer buildings will be within the castle, of course, uh, protected by the walls themselves. And then all the uh, rest of the town is outside the walls. Uh, another, of course, same gate type. Uh, you, we have these little uh, flight of stairs, which you can go up and uh, get on top of this little uh, parapet up here that goes on top of the gate. This area, probably I'm gonna make like a farm area. I'm gonna have like wheat fields and, and other such stuff and maybe a windmill on that hill you know, might look good. Uh, if you wanna, of course, go up to the top of the walls, you can climb up here. And now you're atop the walls, which will, when they're finished, uh, go all the way around. The last thing I need to do for the walls is build the uh, final gate. The, I guess that's the Western gate right there. 
Uh, and instead of being that simple gate, it's going to be an actual portcullis. You might have seen that design before where it uh, pushes it up and then uh, drops the, uh, the gravel. Uh, I really like that kind of gate. I've built it before, so I want to have it there. It looks cool. And uh, you'll see these little towers, these, uh, I guess, uh, turrets that go all along the walls in different areas. And uh, this is just a, a simple design. I had to figure out uh, how I wanted to build them because I, I really wanted the pointiness still. I think it looks great. Uh, but I also wanted, you know, a, an area, um, enough room for, you know, archers to shoot through because, of course, these are for defense. So I came up with this and it's quite, uh, it feels quite secure. I, f I, feel, uh, I feel safe in here. Like, if I was in a battle, I'd want to be in here. I feel like uh, I'm not going to get hit by much up here. But uh, I'm not going to go all the way around the walls. That's basically the walls for now. And now we'll enter the keep. So if you come over here, a few ways, there's a few entrances, uh, doors into the keeps, into the keep. Uh, actually, a lot of ways in. Um, but this is the main door. And I just love how when you enter, you're just greeted by this uh, hall. It feels feels very warm despite everything uh in here the the floors and walls being stone i think th all this uh timber and wood uh gives sort of a warm feeling and of course the fireplace uh makes it feel very warm as well but yeah i'm very happy with how this uh, room turned out i think it has a great medieval feel to it and um by the way this dog uh this dog saved my life once, I'm pretty sure. I was AFK, and uh, when I came back, I was at about half health, and this dog was uh, was up and around me. Oh my god. No! Oh my god. <laughs> sit, sit. I almost just killed my my favorite dog. Oh my god. Okay. Um That was not supposed to happen. This dog saved my life. Um I was AFK, I must have been attacked and he came alert and saved me. So He is not going to die ever, ever. Uh, and actually, I guess that's a good time to uh, show off the kitchen as I get some food for him. Um, I'm not sure if they can eat raw. Uh, but this is the kitchen. Uh, you can see the servants can kind of prepare some stuff on these work surfaces. Get some herbs before they bring it out to the dining room. Uh, also, as you just saw, my storage for food. This is the pantry slash uh, cooking oven area. This is the oven where I cook all my food, of course. Uh, you can't actually, you know, do stacks of food, so you have to just sit here and click in every individual pork chop. So this is where I do that. And uh, more food storage in here, of course. Now, uh, on the other side, we have my storage area. Nothing too crazy, just a bunch of chests, uh, furnaces. Um, I'll go down. Yeah, let's go down before we go up. But, uh, this is the, the vaults, what I call the vaults, this first basement floor. And, uh, this is mainly storage, uh, especially in this room. And we have a little smelting area here where I do all my smelting. Little lava pit for decoration, maybe item deletion. Keep some coal in here. This is, I call this room the grotto because uh, we have this. Now this is kind of going to be a uh, landing bay, underground landing bay for this canal. This canal is gonna go all the way to sea level. It's actually, uh, you can see it's at 63 or 64, I guess. I'm not sure how to say that, but uh, this is going to stretch all the way to sea level. So you can take this out to the sea or from the sea, you can go right into the castle. Um, I just, I don't know, I thought it was a cool idea, and uh, 
It'll probably be useful in the future. Uh, have an idea board here. I have some weird ideas that I want to make, like the apple farm. Uh, I'll just abuse the uh, the way that Betacraft lets you log in uh, with any name uh, to make that. Chainmail Smith is going to be weird. I'm going to have to get the fire item somehow. If all else fails, I'll just uh, fire up the server again and do the slash give command. Uh, here is the... Uh, the railway that goes to the mining camp, and we'll come back to that. I'll show the mine last. Okay, so in this uh, way, you have this great uh, stairwell, the great stair tower. Uh, down there just takes you back to the uh, vaults. But up here, we can go to the second floor. We actually have direct access to the walls from here, and this little uh, jutting out uh, tower right here. I like how there's kind of this little bridge there. And uh, back inside, though, we have this room, which has to be... Okay, don't be creepy right now. Uh, this has to be one of my favorite rooms in the entire castle. Uh, I guess I call this the common room. And it's kind of just a place where you can come and sit on the benches. We have desks here. Warm yourself by the fire. And... Uh, I don't know, it's all very Minecrafty, I guess. And it, it it looks great, in my opinion. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Sadly, there is not much practical uh, purpose here. I store my music discs here, my one music disc. And I have my jukebox, and that's it. Uh, so, not much reason for me to come here, but I do really like this room. Uh, in here is going to be a indoor garden, obviously unfinished. A little balcony out, out here. And before we go up there, this nice flight of stairs, I'll show you this little area, a little, I don't know, extra area, kind of uh, extension of the common room, I guess. Down these stairs, we have this uh, little overlook where you can look at the uh, main hall. It uh, it had to have this. <laughs> I really wanted this. It feels very medieval-y. And then you can go down this flight of stairs and end up right back uh, here, where you can go down to the vaults or go to the storage room. But back upstairs, if you go up this nice little flight here, you can uh, go up to the third floor, also unfinished. Uh, this is just going to be bedrooms. I'm going to have some guest bedrooms here. And then here you can access the tower bedrooms which will be kind of like the the uh, rooms of the actual uh, royal family themselves. Out here you can access the great balcony, which is uh, in the front of the keep. And now we will just go to the roof. That's basically the last part that needs to be seen, uh, for the castle that is. Up here, you take taken to the roof. You have uh, one tower on each of the four corners. This tower is the only one without a, uh, one of the netherrack roofs. It's just open. Uh, kind of nice if you want to get a view. Uh, there's this center structure thing. I think the red roof in the middle of the keep uh, at the top, it it adds a lot to sort of the shape and the look of the, the castle. I, I think uh, it was a good idea to add this, but I have no idea what to do with this. Uh, I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, we have all these different towers here. Uh, this is the tallest tower. I wanted it to be not perfectly symmetrical, so this tower and that tower over there are the same height, but this one is a little taller and also has this sort of uh, turret on the side of it. Um, across this bridge here, this cool little bridge thingy, quite happy with how that turned out. We get this uh, narrow tower. Not totally sure what this will be either, but I'm thinking it's going to be a stairwell down to whatever building I'm going to place in the courtyard over here. It'll connect up to that. I like being very interconnected, having everything have, you know, multiple paths to get to it. I, I don't like feeling claustrophobic. That's one of my least favorite things uh, in a build. And... Uh, as the sun rises, I guess that's a good time to head over to the mines. 
So like I pointed out before, this is uh, the access from the castle vaults to the railway that'll take you to the mines. Now, uh, I actually have a uh, minecart here. I forgot about that. Now, uh, this railway, underground railway, I, I didn't want it to be too bland, so I gave it this uh, decoration with the logs and uh, this kind of uh, unloading bay area with the coal there. Like, uh, they're taking stuff out from the mines and taking it into the castle. So let's hop in and ride our way down there real quick. This uh, actually didn't take that long. I, I, I thought it was going to be quite a, a project, but kind of just sat down and, and I did it. Uh, dug out this whole area, added the logs. I did have to cut down quite a few trees. So that wasn't too... Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I forgot to change the, uh, the tracks there. That's what happened. This is the uh, mining camp area. Um... So here on the surface, we have this little camp. Uh, eventually, I'm going to turn this into a whole miner's guild, like a big building. Uh, sort of like uh, the one in Zvi, like does a, a branch off of this one. This is the original. And um, like I said before, I'm done making boring mines. So I really wanted to make a sort of fun, creative thing here. So the first portion, of course, is that tunnel that took us from the castle over here. And that leads you here, the little uh, end of the rail. And there's two ways you can change the tracks here. You can either go back to the castle. Do we want to do that? Uh, no, we don't, because we're going to see the mine shaft. Uh, we're going to go to the mine shaft and uh, the mine's destination. So you can either go to the quarry, which is over there. The quarry is basically just... It's a big space where I mine stone. There's nothing too crazy in there. Not very interesting. But I did make the rail, so you can bring uh, chest carts if you want. And then we have the actual mine shaft, which goes down to Y25, not diamond level. And there's a reason for that that I'll tell you. Um, but I guess with that out of the way, we'll go down. And you'll notice again, this is all gravity uh, for now. So we stop right here. And this is the uh, mineshaft main room. It's, it's a bit bland. I'm not sure why I thought this would be enough, but I'm going to have to redo this someday and make it uh, look a little cooler. Because uh, I'm not satisfied with this. But so the reason... Uh, that this is a Y25, right? Yeah, Y25. The way this mine works is um, I did not want to make this a strip mine. Strip mining is, you know, it's good, it's effective, but I kind of was getting bored of it. And so the, the point of this mine is to actually find caves. So this main room is gonna branch out in all these different directions and just probe for caves. And once I find a cave, I can build a, the railway there and uh, I can have chest mine carts going there and maybe eventually I can actually have uh, powered rails to go to the really distant uh, places. Uh, sorry about that, my game just crashed. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. But uh, as I was saying, uh, this mine is built to find, oh god, skeleton, <laughs> built to find caves. I find caving way more fun than strip mining, and it's actually not that bad in terms of uh, effectiveness. I find quite a few diamonds when caving, uh, so that's what I decided I wanted to do with this mine. And I am uh, I'm sticking to it. So you have these rails that go out to whatever caves you find, and you of course can bring uh, chest mine carts with you. And uh, you can just push them along. I don't see a lot of people doing this, uh, but pushing minecarts is pretty easy and uh, it will save you on powered rails. Uh, so for now, that's what I want to do here. Um, oh my goodness. Um, hmm. The crash may have added extra minecarts. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope it didn't screw too much up. 
Anyways, you can push carts up uh, slopes too by just walking along stairs like this and walking next to the cart. So that's really convenient. Um, and it's, you know, the same speed as just walking, so I figure I might as well do it if I uh, need to transport extra stuff in a chest. So that is the mine. And uh, that is basically the last thing I have to show you in this world. Um, I have, of course, a lot planned for this world. And now that I've made this, I figure, you know, maybe I'll make some progress videos or another world tour sometime. But uh, other than that, that's basically all I have to show you right now. So if you actually watch the end, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Really wanted to show this off. I know it's not much. Uh, I know a lot of people could do a lot more in a year, but I'm proud of what I have. So uh, thanks so much.